Uh, okay, I got I have micage now. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about how to configure the uh, Rails system so that it actually emails it out to the email cloud to, and actually delivers the email that we've only been seeing in the log file. We've only been able to see that it executes my email system by looking in the log file. So in the uh, mailer guide, in the action mailer guide on uh, guides.rubyonrails.org, they have a uh, section in here on how to use Google Mail. Uh, if I can find it, I'll search for it, Gmail. There you go. It's even got a link. There we go. So action mailer configuration for Gmail. This is, this is the settings we have to do in the environment file that I'm working in. So when they say config slash environment slash dollar sign rails, what they're meaning is whatever version of whatever version of Rails you're running, in whether development or test or production. And in development, we might have one setting here, and in production, it would be different because we're not going to use Google to send out our production emails. So we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to copy all of this information here and go to uh, that configuration. So config slash environment slash one of these three environments, and I'm in the development environment. So this is what I want to do uh, is add all of that here in the mailer information here. So I'm going to add all of this information and then edit this. Uh, and at the same time, I want to raise some errors, especially in my development mode. So I'm going to set this to true so that if any errors come up, I should get an error in the in the development log. The delivery method is going to be SMTP, which is Simple Mail Transport Protocol. That's how it's going to deliver the mail. And these are the settings for Gmail. The address is going to be smtp.gmail.com. The port is 587. The domain is uh, is not needed in this case. So I'm going to uh, comment that out. The username is your Gmail account name. Uh, so in my case, it's going to be uh, lockersoft at gmail.com. And the password is going to be whatever the password is. Authentication is plain. And these, the rest of these are going to be the standard uh, T, uh, TTLS auto is going to be true. So those should be set correctly. And I'm going to fix my password so that it will actually email it. And uh, I don't want to show that. So I'm going to stop my recording for a minute. Mm -hmm. ah, I, I set my password. I didn't want anybody to see it. So uh, since I changed a configuration, I need if your server was running, I need to stop that and restart it. Uh, I didn't start mine yet, so I'm going to start it up now. And I've logged into my Gmail account over here so I can see some actual uh, emails come through. Let's see if that works. And then I need to actually go and execute the mail. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Got to wait for my server to come up. Waiting. Any questions so far? Yes. Yeah, I actually have to receive the emails. Uh, and you should receive the email from your uh, email address as well. Yeah, obviously, you put your own email address and your own password. Uh, don't use mine. You're going to use your own uh, site. Uh, I'm assuming most of you have email Gmail accounts. If if not, you can make one. They're free, so do it. All right, so let's uh, let's generate an email. Let's email this recipe and see what I get in my log. Did I actually click on it? Yeah. All right, so here's the email. It's going to. Uh, 
I have a, a two which is wrong here, so it's it's not going to actually send. Uh, that's going to be a problem, right? So I need to change who I'm going to, <clears throat> and that would be coming from your uh, from your database because you're going to pull the users that that require a newsletter, and you're going to use their email address. So in this case. I'm going to change this to uh, send it to myself, my LockerSoft account. So I'm going to hard code it here and try it again. Really? Okay, so now it's sending to LockerSoft at Gmail from Dave at LockerSoft. We'll see if they actually allow that, if Gmail allows that. And there we go. I have an actual email that came through, just like that, from Dave, uh, and it's a new recipe, Dave's Bleeding Edge. I click on that, and that is my HTML version of this email. Isn't that cool? And the link, it now shows up as a true link, and because we set the uh, default host yesterday, uh, if I click on this, this will actually work because I'm on my same computer. But in reality, that local host is not a real domain name. So if that's sent out to somebody else, it's not going to work, right? That, you realize that's going to be the real domain name of your site when you deploy it. Uh, but that takes me back to the website, my local host. Isn't that cool? <coughs> so let's look at uh, the... Uh, they keep changing their interface. Oh, no, I lost it. Um, so here's my email. Um, there was a way to look at the raw, the raw. Show original. Okay, so this is the original email that comes through, and this is the same stuff that we see in the log file. All right, so this, uh, but it actually gets delivered. It got received from localhost.local domain. From, and if I look at the IP address, this is the school's external IP address, right? That's the, the uh, proxy server that we get out to the internet for. So that's the IP address. So it knows it came from the school. It adds some things like the date, the time that I actually sent the email. It's got a from and a to. Uh, sets up a message ID. And then I, it sends it in the two parts. Remember that multi-part alternative? I've got the, the plain text version of the email, which was this, and then the HTML version of the email, which had all of the rest of the stuff in it with all that, the true HTML. And since Google Mail... Uh, is an HTML browser already, it displays this one as the default. So it, it puts an H2 tag around it, you know, H1, displays these as an ordered list, an unordered list, uh, etc. So uh, if I had an image, that would pick up the image as well. All right, any questions on that? Fairly easy to do. Uh, I would not configure it and keep looking in your log file until you think you have everything working right. Otherwise, you're going to spam yourself or something uh, with a ton of email. So do that at the last minute. Make sure that everything is working before you actually send out a bunch of emails. I've had that in the past, uh, especially in PHP, when you're trying to loop through and send out a ton of emails. Uh, I've had that end up being an infinite loop, and it just... Not me, I mean one of the students, obviously. I'm perfect, I don't do that kind of stuff, but. <laughs> anyway. Yes, I have built tons of infinite loops. That's, that's fun stuff. All right, so uh, any questions on the configuration of the email? Any questions on just emails in general? How to, how to trigger them? Uh, remember my, my uh, PDF that shows you have to trigger it and that's probably the hardest thing is to realize 
how the email gets sent. You can put the email delivery anywhere in your code. We did it yesterday in the model. Remember I added this uh, send recipes? I, I didn't test this, but this is uh, where it would loop through all of the people and send out all of the recipes. All right, any questions? Yes. Well, yeah, you'll have to have a couple of users, at least two, uh, so you can test that it's looping. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to have you set up 100 users. That's too much. Uh, but so looping through to send all of your articles, they should have at least two people, which you should have your own user and me as, as, as an admin. So those are the two. Uh, when I go to the contact page, though, I should be able to put in my own email address. And so I'm going to put in, like, one of my external email addresses, like my Dave at Lockersoft.com, something like that. And when I ask a question, I should get that email at my Lockersoft address. In addition, I should get the blind carbon copy email to my Dave.Jones at SEC email address. So I should get two when I sign up myself for a question. In addition, the third email, remember that one sends three emails. The third email goes to uh, you as the admin, whoever, you know, your email address, when they submit a question from the Contact Us page. Well, there's a, it's a blind copy. You're going to send a thank you to the user. You're going to send all the information to the admin, and you're going to blind copy me on these three emails. Well, the blind copy is the same email address, right? That's fine. So uh, I don't think we actually covered that, but in the, in the mailer itself, there are a lot of configurations that we can add to this. So all I have to do is add another hash key value in here and put, uh, put in the, the blind carbon copy email address and that won't show up on the email at all. It'll just send me a copy of that email. So that's, uh, that's the exact what you have to do? Yep. Copy? Yep. It, and, and I wouldn't want this on the articles when you're sending them out. I want it on the Contact Us page. Yeah, I'd have to have a comment at the end, right? All right. Any other questions on that? Yeah, those are the same. They, they're they actually aliased here at school. Dave.Jones and DL Jones are the same email address. I'm, I'm sure I have mail. Yeah, I'll get a ton of mail. That's why I would prefer that you test it and look in the log file first before you actually send me a 1,000 emails over the next week. Uh, <laughs> Google will only allow you in, a, in this type of a mode 100 a day, and then they'll cut you off. So if you've tested this 100 times and all of a sudden your email stops working, that's why. You have to wait until the, tomorrow to continue testing it, which, again, is why you should look at it in the log first uh, and not worry about that. All right. So uh, I wanted to show you some more of the – where's my uh, – here we go. Uh, there are a lot of configuration settings – uh, I'm sorry, where is it? Ah. No, they don't show they don't show them here. Uh, but this this so shows the blind carbon and the CC uh, places here. Everybody understand the difference between the blind carbon copy and the carbon copy? No? Okay. The carbon copy puts it in the, uh, in the email, and you'll actually see that it was sent to more than one person. Okay? So it'll, you'll see it was to Dave, and it also sent to Joe and to Susie and the VP and all of that stuff. So it's additional addresses that everybody can see. And, and they do that in the corporate world for, politi for political reasons, right? If I'm going to complain about my boss, I also copy the vice president on the email. 
right? And so the boss sees that the vice president got the email too, and and they say, oh, well, I better answer this email. It's uh, politically that's one of the main reasons they do that. Or you're just trying to inform other people about some issue. The blind carbon copy, the person receiving that email has no idea that another person got the same copy of the email. Okay, and. Uh, in the old days, when we actually sent paper, I know that you guys don't remember that, but we uh, they actually the secretaries would type out uh, uh, the letter to somebody, and at the bottom of the page, it would put CC colon and the, a, a list of names of where this email, this text, ah, this uh, paper copy went to. And they actually, in the really old days, they used carbon paper to create multiple copies of the same file. So they didn't have to retype it every time. They typed one, and they could generate three or four copies of that at the same time by having multiple carbons between the pages. And the blind carbon copy was only put on uh, one, e one of the addresses, uh, you know, the guy that, that sent it out or something for his own sake. And nobody knew that they got that. That was what that meant. All right? Carbonless paper, yeah. Nobody uses a typewriter anymore. All right. Any, uh, any other questions on that? Um, if you're having questions, I highly recommend you, you read this guide. Uh, this, this goes through a lot of things. You can, you can add attachments to email uh, unless you're on Windows. Um, Windows doesn't do attachments well, as we found out, right, Ryan? <laughs> It'll work on a Mac. Um, and that's about it. Any other questions? All right, done.